seducing. The Daredevils of Hollywood. Now look, Charles, here's your scene. You're driving an ambulance down the street, wide open, siren going, and a lot of noise. Now, it's supposed to be Christmas time, and there's an enormous Christmas tree in the middle of the street. You skid around the corner and smash right into the tree, and what I mean, smash it. Well, uh, don't worry about that, Mr. Hudson. When I get through with that tree, there'll be an evergreen sprig for everybody in town. That's the stuff. Drive up the street there and stand by for your signal. Okay, here I go. All right, Mr. Hudson, everything's ready. Good. Let's go. Okay, everybody. Places, everybody. This is a take. Quiet, please. Quiet. Action. Give him the signal, Joe. <laughs> Camera. Well, that looks real enough. It's coming plenty fast. It looks like there won't be much left of that tree or ambulance. There he goes. <laughs> From Hollywood, the motion picture capital of the world, we bring you the thrilling true life experiences of those men behind the scenes. Those daring unsung heroes whose breathtaking adventures on the screen have thrilled millions. Whose daily jobs bring them face to face with death. Those men who comprise the strangest fraternity on earth. The Suicide Squad. The movie stuntmen. The Daredevils of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, in presenting this copyrighted radio feature, we are indeed fortunate in having as our guest one of the few stunt girls of the movies, Miss Eileen Goodwin. It is through her cooperation that we are able to reenact some of the highlights of her dangerous profession. The thrilling scenes you are about to hear are her own actual experiences. Miss Goodwin is here in the studio right now, and later in the program we will bring her to the microphone. But first, let's look in on a typical routine day in the life of this charming and attractive young woman. It is a damp, chilly morning in 1933. Heavy clouds of fog roll in from the sea and settle over the sleeping town of Burbank, California. Across the street from the railroad station is a small, dimly lighted cafe whose windows are beginning to fog with heat from the kitchen. A man is just entering. Are you open for business yet? Why, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Come right in. What's going to be? Ah, uh, let's see. I want to get something to take out. Give me about uh, 40 ham and egg sandwiches and two gallons of coffee. Huh? I said 40 ham and egg sandwiches and a couple of gallons of java. Uh, uh, 40 ham and egg, uh, two gallons of coffee. Say, what is this? Are you trying to kid somebody? Now, uh, listen, brother, I've been up practically all night. And nothing that makes me more irritable than the loss of sleep. And do I get that stuff or do I have to lose my temper? Uh, why, sure, sure, you can get them, but uh, I've just kind of wondered what well, you're Well, don't wonder so much and give me some fast service. Yes, well, whatever you say. Uh, 40 ham and egg sands to go. You say 40? Yes, it's at 40. No question. Uh, say, there's, there's a lot of people hanging around the station over there this morning, ain't they? Wonder what's up. It's a picture company. Going to shoot some scenes here today. Well, you don't say. Yeah. Movies, huh? That's where all the food's gone. Well, what kind of scenes are they going to take? Uh, something about a train? Yeah, the main shot is the stunt. You know, dangerous stuff. Oh, sure, yeah. I've heard about them stunt men. Well, in this case, it's no stunt man. Hmm. Hey, look. You see that good-looking girl over there talking to the director? Yeah. She's one of the most daring stunt women in the business. That's so. She's going to do the stunt today. The director's probably gone over the gag with her right now. Well, Eileen, what do you think of the location for your scene? Well, it's just Jim Dandy as far as railroad stations go. But the thing I'm interested in is what's the stunt? It's a comedy scene. Now, here's the general idea. You're doubling our heroine, and you've been in a chariot race, you see, and you've won. But instead of stopping at the finish line... You head the horses for the station and come flying in here at top speed. Oh, I see. Do I want to catch a train or something? Yes, that's the idea. But the train is just pulling out when you get here. Well, then what do I do? You come driving the chariot down the road there, run up on the cement platform right here, and then up alongside the train. There'll be a man on the back of the observation car to pick you up. Mm, I see. That's going to be quite a bump for the chariot when I hit the platform. That thing is at least two feet high. Yes, I figure the horses will jump up on it. And this chariot you're driving can't do anything else but follow. <laughs> well, it could go straight up, you know. Well, I'll admit it'll be a jolt, all right, Eileen, because the horses will be running at full speed. Oh, no, it's the same old story. You never know what'll happen in these stunts until the time comes. Well, at least until then, I'm not going to worry about it. That's the spirit. But I'm sure everything will be okay. Oh, boy, look. Here comes Joe with the coffee and sandwiches. And, boy, can I use some of that. All right, come and get it. Oh, boy, 
And now, three hours later, we find the motion picture company still on the location set. Several minor scenes have already been taken, and now time for the thrilling chariot run is at hand. Eileen Goodwin, in makeup and costume, sits on the sideline chatting with a few members of the troupe. Nat Ross, the director, is just approaching. Well, folks, we've got one more scene and we're through. How about it, Eileen? Are you all set? I've been ready for hours, Mr. Ross. The sooner, the better. Good. Get in the chariot and drive down to the bend in the road there, Eileen. I'll give you a signal of two whistles to start your run. And remember, give it all you've got. Okay, but I'm still worried about that platform. It's going to be a real bump. Well, I'll be seeing you. Make it good. All right, everybody. Here we go. The train crew is all set, Mr. Ross. They got the signal straight? Yes, sir. All right, let's take it. Quiet, everybody. This is a picture. All right, give Eileen the signal, Joe. You know, that kid's got plenty of nerve to do a gag like this. Look at the way she handles those horses. Hey, she's really taking out. Okay, stop the train. Camera. Here she comes. Look, she's making some nice skids in that thing. Oh, boy, look at that. Keep turning those cameras, men. See, this is swell so far. Yeah, but we're not finished yet. Look, she's headed to the platform. Now watch this. She's coming awful fast. Wait, stop! That chariot bounced six feet in the air. Look, she almost fell out of the thing. I hope it doesn't turn over. Man, what a shot. It landed on both wheels. That's perfect. Now she's heading for the train. Boy, and is it stepping along. She's running right alongside. This is great. Look at Ted on the observation platform. He's leaning out to pick her up. Here's your shot, Matt. Oh, good grief. He almost dropped her. See, that was close. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present the fearless young girl who made that scene, whose career in motion pictures has been built on her ability to face great danger calmly. Miss Eileen Goodwin, interviewed by Glenn Hardy. Well, Miss Goodwin, that was certainly a thrill. <laughs> well, thrilling is a mild word, Mr. Hardy. <laughs> I can imagine it is, but tell me, how did you happen to get started doing stunts for the movies? Mm, I was once in uh, vaudeville, and finally I came to Hollywood and began working in pictures. You know, bits and extra work? Yes. Well, the stunts just followed as a matter of course. They were simple things at first. And finally, I was doing all kinds of stunts. I see. Miss Goodwin, what stars have you doubled for in stunt work? Well, let me see. Irene Dunn and uh, Claudette Colbert, Margaret Lindsay, Patsy Kelly, Marlena Dietrich, uh, Ida Lupino, and quite a few more. Do you have a contract with any certain studio? Well, no. I, I'm on call at all of them. I'm freelancing at present. You know, except for your dark hair, you, you'd look very much like Jean Parker. Did you ever double for her? Yes, I did once, and it was quite a thrill, too. Well, could we persuade you to tell us about it? Oh, I'd be glad to. That's fine, Miss Goodwin. We're very anxious to hear about it, but first, I know you won't mind if we pause for just a word from our sponsor. All right, now, Miss Goodwin, what about the time you doubled for Jean Parker? Well, um, it was in 1935, an MGM picture directed by David Butler... I had to fall from a fire escape on the third floor of a building. Hey, that was some assignment. Well, it developed later that it truly was. I was to fall and land in a net. Now, now you see, you're supposed to back out the window onto the little fire escape platform. The idea is that you're repulsing the advances of a man, you mm -hmm. see? I understand. I back out the open window and lean against the railing. Uh -huh. The railing gives way and I fall. That's the idea, but I want most of that fire escape to fall with you. I've had a few of the bars thawed in two, and I'm sure that it'll work. Okay, I'll go up and get ready. Twenty minutes have elapsed. Time for the dangerous scene is at hand. All eyes are glued to the third-story fire escape with this thought predominant. A slip will cost a life. Okay, ready, everybody? This is a take. Quiet, please. This is it. All right. Places. Turn him over. Okay, go ahead, Miss Goodwin. There she is, backing out good. Nice and slow. Yes, there she is on the platform. Well, here's your scene. Couldn't ask for better than that, Dave. Oh, that's great. Cut! She made a perfect landing in the net. Great 
shot. Look out. The whole fire escape is about to fall. Look out, Elise. Look out, you fool. Well, that was a narrow escape, Miss Goodwin, and I'd say you were pretty lucky. <laughs> well, you're right about that. That fire escape missed me by about a half an inch. Mm. Luck is all that saved me there. Well, how did you manage to get out of the way of that falling iron? I looked up just in time to see it coming and made a dive clear. Say, tell me, have you ever been injured while doing stunts for the movies? Oh, yes, a few times, but not ever very seriously. Well, let's hope that your good luck continues. By the way, may I ask what you plan to do in the future? Are you going to stick to the stunt business? Well, who knows? I really don't. <laughs> At any rate, Miss Goodwin... You have provided us with some very thrilling entertainment, but time's come to say goodbye for now. On behalf of our listeners, I want to sincerely thank you for coming here. I know that everyone joins me in hoping that you will visit us again sometime very soon. Goodbye for now, and the best of luck. 